It says there, my name's Ian Scott. Third, before I start, three apologies. First of all, uh, after listening to the erudite and educated speakers already this morning, I uh, feel a little bit like the uh, Wheel of Fortune uh, candidate that ended up on Jeopardy by mistake. Um, secondly, um, I've been told I have an accent. I asked for subtitles, uh, but they couldn't produce them. So if, if you don't understand anything, please speak to me afterwards. Third thing, uh, apology is, um, you'll hear me use the first person singular quite a bit during my little story here. Um, that's because this is very much a personal thing for me. I'm a sports fan. I've been involved in video for many years. Uh, and the development of the JVC Sports Solutions has been a personal journey for me uh, and a bit of a labor of love. So, apologies out of the way. Talking about Wheel of Fortune, I've just spotted the um, grammatical error in this slide. Damn. Don't do your slides late at night. My apologies again, four apologies. Um, everybody wants to be ESPN, or NBC, or ABC, or CBS. There's a, a desire for sports um, content. It seems to be an insatiable um, appetite for sports. Everybody's a sports fan, particularly in America. Well, that's good. But not everybody can afford the, uh, the infrastructure to produce a top-end production of a live event. But that's the benchmark. That's the viewer expectation. The viewer expectation is uh, really good picture quality. They expect the scoreboard overlay to be there. The clock, everything's got to be there. And every team from, from rec football up through high school or college, there's an audience there that wants to uh, view football or uh, volleyball or whatever the sport is, is, is going on. But there's a huge number of barriers um, in front of a, an organization that wants to stream a live event. For high schools, it's, for most high schools in the country, it's simply too expensive to consider a multi-camera operation. Uh, there's, there's no possible way that they could get the revenue back for the, for the cost of such a, a complex multi-camera operation. They don't even have the people that are experienced enough to operate this sort of thing. So for high schools, it's a very rare thing to see a high school uh, covering their own game. There's professional organizations that out there that, that do do uh, coverage of, of live high school sports, but there's a, mine, a, a very small portion of, of the total number of teams. There's 117,000 uh, high school sports team in the country. Um, and out there, there's, there's the uncles and aunts that want to watch that live out state, can't watch little Johnny or little Jane playing their sport. So there's a demand, but there's, there's not a, um, there's not really a mechanism to, to do that. Uh, you could use one of these and stream, but the, con the, the, the picture's gonna be lousy. Nobody wants to watch lousy. Imri talked to, uh, earlier on about a um, light bulb moment. Well, there was a light bulb moment for me here that, last year at this event, when I heard Imri talking about the challenges that, that he has at Harvard. Because it seems that even relatively uh, well-funded organizations, Division I colleges, even if they have money, they run out of human resources before they run out of sports events that need coverage. So Imri threw a question out, I think, uh, at one point, during the conference last year, uh, how, do we, how do we cover events when we run out of personnel, when we run out of equipment? We can buy more equipment, but we haven't got the people to run it. So th this was a light bulb moment for me, um, that really the, what we need, or what the industry needs, what high schools and colleges need, is a, is a method to live stream a sporting event with a professional quality with a scoreboard overlay. So 
I started to make in, uh, in my head a list of the things that, that need, to, need to happen. And I'd already done some experiments with a, uh, a camera that we, the JVC launched uh, three years ago, which was designed for the news, uh, broadcast news industry. Um, it's a three chip camera, able to stream live either with uh, 4G LTE or with a Wi Fi network. And it's, it's really gorgeous. And I, done some experiments with, with my local high school football team because I've got two teenage kids that play football. Um, and the results were really, really good. Um, streaming at three megabits per second using uh, Verizon modem, perfect. But no score overlay. Um, and what school can afford a $6,000 camera? But then last year, uh, last spring, um, we launched a sort of baby sister to the $6,000 camera, which is a $2,500 single chip device that can also stream. So, okay, $2,500 is a price that some high schools could, could afford. It's um, not beyond the, uh, the budget for a booster club, perhaps. But can we really turn this into something that can really produce live coverage. Um, so I spoke to the guys in the factory and said, oh yeah, we can do that. So within a couple of months, we have a single camera, which is able, able to shoot um, and record up to 50 megabits per second, but it can also stream live using 4G LTE or a wireless network. Um, and we can do the score overlay in the camera with templates for various sports, basketball, baseball, football, soccer, et cetera, et cetera. And the beautiful thing about this camera is it has a, a web, its own built-in web, web host. Um, so you can remotely control the camera from a, an iPhone or a tablet or a laptop from anywhere in the world because it's got its own IP address. You just need to access the camera. So the factory worked up a, a sequence of um, score overlays um, with a control interface for a tablet that's easy to use. And after doing some experiments, um, that's me in the hat there, um, we can stream use, with a single operator it's really quite easy to operate the camera and the, and the control interface. And even with working the clock, when what I found is I'm, I'm not a prof professional camera operator, I'm just a desk jockey salesperson. Um, when the umpire called to reset the clock at the, at the two minute warning, I found I was two seconds out, which is not bad. It's good enough for high school. So there it is, and it works for wrestling or field hockey or basketball. So some of those, some of those key requirements had been answered within a couple of months, but hold on a minute. Which school wants to spend $300, $500 a week on the data usage to stream with 4G LTE? Um, not so affordable. Data costs money. It's all right if you're indoors, you can use the local, uh, local area network of the school, but that's not normally the situation with an, an outdoor sport. The, the, the turf field is normally far away from the building, no local area network coverage there. So we worked with um, some sort of off-the-shelf LAN equipment. Uh, from Ubiquity. Uh, so using a $200 repeater and an aerial with a 5.8 gigahertz um, frequency, so it's out of the range of normal co um, interference from mobile phones, to provide a secure wireless connection from the camera to the school's or institution's local area network. Streaming is free. 
Suddenly, you can stream wirelessly using your LAN. Um, and in the, in the case of this particular high school, which is my local high school, we put a, a, one of these 200 buck aerials on the roof of the main building, a little $200 aerial on the top of the commentator's box, and the distance is about 1,000 meters. It will go three, 4,000 meters with line of sight. And we've got 33 gigabit per second upload, free of charge, with the school's LAN, perfectly secure and free from interference. So suddenly the school can not only stream live events with a single operator, but they can also do it free of charge. You can stream, you can, you can stream to YouTube totally free. Um, and there it is, you can see in the distance, the little aerial there, $200 for an off-the-shelf solution. But one more thing, some sports are difficult to, to keep track of, this, of, this, of the clock, particularly uh, base basketball, where you've got a shot clock and the, the game clock. Really, really difficult for a single operator to be able to cover a game and operate the clock at the same time. So our friends at Sportscast have a little device called a Scorebot, which interfaces to practically every scoreboard manufacturer out there. Um, and we can suck the data out of this Scorebot. So that means the, the Scorebot is sitting here taking the data from the venue scoreboard, and our camera takes the, that data and overlays it directly onto the, onto the output and the recording. No need for the camera operator to do anything other than operate the camera. Perfect solution. So, so far, we've covered quite a few of those things that were necessary, that light bulb moment a year ago when, when Imri talked. But also for colleges, if, it, if it's a, you're mostly college people here, I'm sure you've all got your um, college conference preferred score bug design. It's got to be customizable. Thank you, Imri. Uh, Imri is now using our little camera for covering rowing, and we can do that customized, completely custom designed overlay in the camera. So whether it's Ivy League, Pac-12, Big 12, whatever you want, the, 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 the score bug can be completely customized. So thank you to Sports Video Group, um, and thank you to Imri for the light bulb moment a year ago that has enabled us to develop a, a solution which can apply to high schools or colleges for the, uh, okay, not for the big events, but for the smaller events. You want a single camera, single operator solution to cover the things that couldn't be covered otherwise. That's it from me. Thank you very much, Dan.